teachers get CSV export files from the course management system. And in this data set, we just want a unique list of student names and the date time that they last access the class website. Now, two videos ago, we saw how to do it with Excel formulas. Last video, we saw how to do it with a pivot table. But the beauty of doing it with Power Query is that we can import the CSV file, which is not a real Excel file. In a CSV file, we can't do things like formulas and pivot tables. But with Power Query, not only can we import it, but in the process of importing it, with a few clicks, we'll create our report. Most systems in the world can export data as either .csv or .txt, which are text files. And again, we can't do much with those alone, but we definitely can import them into Excel so that we can create the reports we want. Now, this is the pivot table report we created last time. But all we want to do is, in this video, go to Data. And in the Get and Transform group, we can click on From Text CSV. You want to navigate. And we have a second file. We're going to see what happens when we get the next file with updated data. So the first import will be textdata.csv. Click Import. It wants to know what the delimiter is. It guessed comma, which is correct. That's our preview. And we want to go down not to load, but to transform data. Now, this is the Power Query Editor. We can see it got the correct columns and interpreted it correctly as a table. Over here, this is the first step it created. If that text file changes location or the file name changes, you could come back to this window, click the gear icon, and edit the file path right here. I'll show you a different way to do that later. It automatically promoted headers, because it was originally a text file, and it changed the types. If you go through and click the data type icons, you can check to see if the data types are the correct ones, things like text and numbers. And for us, very importantly, we definitely want this as date time, which of course you can see from the icon that it is. Now, rather than import all the columns, we're only interested in two columns. So I'm going to select Last Access, scroll over. Holding Control, I'm going to click on Sortable Name, right click, Remove Other Columns. That adds a new step. Now, in a pivot table, when we dragged a field to the row area, it created a unique list. And then we made an aggregate calculation where we asked for the max last access date. In Power Query and SQL database computer language, we use the Group By feature to do the same thing. So I want to right click and point to Group By. Group By is also Home, Transform, and Group By. So I'm going to select Group By. I want to Group By Sortable Name by selecting the column. This feature knows to give us a unique list. I'm going to call the column something like Last Access Date Time. Operation is going to be max and last access. There's a drop down if you had more columns. And that's it. When I click OK, there is my report. Now think about this. We are in the middle of importing, and with a couple extra steps, there's our final report. Not only that, but when the data changes, we'll refresh and everything will update. Now very carefully, we want to go up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2. And I want to put this on a new worksheet. Actually, if we had clicked the button, because the default is table and new worksheet, that would have worked. But it's always safer to come here and make sure that everything's correct. And now when I click OK, there's the report. I can come down and double click and rename this and Enter. Now, this report is connected to that CSV file, which has a very specific file path and file name. Now, when you download data later, what I usually do is if it's something I want to regularly update, then when I'm downloading the file, I just replace the existing one. Then all we'd have to do is inside the report, right click Refresh. But if you want to keep a historical record and keep the two files, we'll change the file path and file name inside of Power Query. So it's pointing towards the new file. We can go back up to Data. 
get data down to data source settings. And that's the file path and original file name, change source. And you could just type it here or browse. In our case, there's only a 2 at the end. And now we're changing the data source that this report is linked to. Click OK. Click Close. And now I come over and right click, Refresh. And there we can see right there the access date time has updated. Now wait a second. This report was supposed to be sorted. Well, one of the amazing things about Power Query, if I click on Queries and Connection, this pane over here, I can edit. And I want to edit two things because first off, that's not a good name. So I'm going to right click, Edit, or simply double click. The first thing I want to do is rename this Query, and then hit Enter. And now I just want to add a step. So I come over to the Filter dropdown, which just like in Excel, we can filter or sort. Let's do Sort Ascending. And there we go. It adds a new step. When I click Close, the report is updated. All right, so we saw how to, in this video, use Power Query. The advantage is we can directly link to that CSV file and build the report as part of the import process. We saw in Excel Magic Trick 1688, Pivot Table is by far the easiest to create. And in 1687, if you need your report to instantly update, meaning no refresh, then you use formulas. All right, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out the other two ways to do this, here's the video links.